Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to demonstrate pulse oximeter implementation with infrared transmitter and receiver LEDs. As you can see, this is my basic setup. I have not used any amplifiers yet, any processing circuits yet. This is the base circuit, the basic circuit. So as you can see, this is my this is my receiver LED, infrared receiver LED. This is the infrared receiver LED. As you can see, this is the infrared receiver LED. This receiver LED is powered with a 12 volts DC supply. There is a current limiting resistor of 1 mega ohm and a 100 kilo ohm. From 100 kilo ohm parallel to 100 kilo ohm, I am taking multimeter output and I am displaying the result here. As you can see, I am displaying the result here. This is the result across the receiver circuit on the parallel to 100, 100 kilo ohm resistance. So now I am going to show the transmitter. So this is my infrared transmitter LED. As you can see, this is the infrared transmitter LED. So let me switch off the flash. Now you can see here the LED is glowing. You can see the LED is glowing. You can see the violet lamp outside. It, this is glowing. So this is this this LED is emitting infrared light at present. So this infrared light will be received by the receiver if I put them opposite to each other. You can see like this. If I put them put it here like this, then in the transmitter infrared light will be received by the receiver LED. So in that case, you will see the voltage will be 1 volts, 1.1 volts DC. Because 100% of the transmitted light will be received by the receiver. You can see here 100% of the transmitted light is received by the receiver. So the voltage is 1.15 volts. Now if I put my finger inside in between, in between the transmitter and the receiver, the transmitter LED will transmit its waveform and it will be absorbed by the bloodstream. The infrared, infrared ray from the infrared transmitter LED will be absorbed by the bloodstream. The reflected rays from the bloodstream will be received by the receiver LED. This is proportional to the percentage of oxygen in blood. Like this we can find out the specific oxygen in blood, the SpO2 content in blood in percentage. More the oxygen content, the absorption of the LED, absorption of the infrared light will be less. Absorption of the infrared light will be less. And, and highest the absorption of infrared light, less oxygen will be there in the blood. The result, the relation is inverse. Now as you can see, I am putting my finger. The receiver is bit below, transmitter is on the top, my finger is in between. Now my finger is in between. Now you can see the reading on the multimeter. It is 0 0.640 volts DC. You can see the voltage is 0 0.623, 0 0.614 DC. So now I am going to put my index finger. So now already I am measuring the index finger. So I will measure the middle finger. You can see this is the measurement of the middle finger. You can see this is the measurement of the middle finger. So this is the measurement of the ring finger. You can see and this is the measurement of the little finger. So as you can see here, basically whatever the infrared transmitter LED is transmitting the amount of infrared light absorbed in the bloodstream is getting absorbed. The resultant blood, the resultant infrared light is received on the receiver LED which is proportional to the oxygen content in the blood. So this is how a pulse oximeter works. I am going to show the circuit now. As you can see this is my circuit diagram. So this is the transmitter LED, IR LED and this is a 1K resistance in series with the IR LED and this is the receiver LED 
in series with 1 mega ohm resistance and 100k resistance. So here we are measuring the voltage and we are getting 0 0.645, 0 0.635, 0 0.635 like on the different fingers. Now this is the relation of specific oxygen percentage with the volts. It is directly proportional linear curve and the reflected wave reflected wave is inversely proportional to the percentage. So reflected waves, more reflected wave comes, there the voltage will be less. So voltage is inversely proportional to the reflected waves. That's why you can see reflected wave and SpO2, the curve is like this and volts and SpO2 curve is like this. So when it is 6 point something volts, it has to be on the particular percentage. We need to do a scaling and we can easily make a pulse oximeter circuit in practical. I am going to do this in the next video. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.